All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Ashley Medeiros, the content manager here at Workies. And today I am joined by Alan Holmes from InSource Books. He's here to discuss our new auto reconciliation feature. So by the end of this webinar, you'll know how to save up to 12 hours a week on reconciling payments between your bank account and QuickBook Online without even worrying about errors. Imagine that. Um, we ask that you please hold questions until the Q&A at the end. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, so Alan, thank you again for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, I, finance is not my forte. I'm pretty dumb when it comes to numbers. So in pretty layman's terms, could you explain to me what is reconciliation? Why do we need it? Is it important? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, definitely. No problem. Uh, reconciliation uh, is what you do when you get in a fight with your wife. Um, and it's very important for a happy marriage. Wait, is this the wrong webinar? No, wrong webinar. We're on marriage payments. Counseling <laughs> webinar afterwards. All right. Uh, in accounting terms, finance, or finance, accounting terms, reconcile is we're taking different amounts and we're trying to, or different reports, and we're trying to figure out why they are different. And, and it is in a sense the same thing that you would do if you're fighting with your spouse where you try to find that harmony in between these two different numbers. Um, and this is what, what we're talking about here in QuickBooks is going to be primarily bank reconciliations, where you're matching your bank statement to the numbers that are showing up in your QuickBooks bank account. Uh, credit card reconciliations, where you're showing, if you're using a credit card, what's showing up on your credit card statement versus what's showing up in your credit card ledger in your QuickBooks account. And for you guys, payments, if you're using third-party uh, merchant service accounts, finding out how much you've actually received in your bank account versus how much was charged on the card. And a lot of merchant services will take a percentage of that as a credit card collection fee. And so that's one of the things that we're going to be delving in here today. So how often should these things be done? The reconciling with the wife or the financial part? <laughs> the financial part. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Again, we're going to stick on this one. Okay. Uh, that's whenever you get the statements, we're really reconciling it. At any point, you can look at your bank account online. You can look at your QuickBooks online and try to you know match those things. But there's always tr transactions and payments in, in progress, uh, undeposited funds, things like that. You'll see something. I, shoot, I went to the gas station the other day. And I bought $59 worth of gas and it charged my card $109 and just put a hold on it. So if I tried to reconcile my account that day, it would look like I paid $109 in gas. And, it, you know, it's $59, but they put a hold on the account and left it in pending transactions. So you really want to do that when the statement comes out because the statements never have pending transactions. They have actual cleared transactions. These are called cleared transactions once they hit the statement. So for bank accounts, a lot of times that's going to be on a monthly basis. For credit cards, shoot, those happen all the time. You get a credit card statement on the 12th, 13th, 14th, whenever. You can do it at any point. Um, and payments, again, when you're collecting payments, receiving payments in using a merchant service, sometimes that happens. Um, if you have multiple transactions during the day, you'll get one deposit. It's called a batch deposit. Or if you have, you know, one a day, you can actually see that happening in the bank. But usually you want to do that um, when you get that merchant service statement, when you can get that report. All right. Can you show us um, how it's done manually in QuickBooks Online? Yeah, definitely. Let's uh, screen share this because I know that's why everyone is here to look at some accounting stuff, not marriage advice. That's fine. <laughs> Marriage advice is a bonus. <laughs> we do that for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the sample company. If you're not using QuickBooks Online, you can just Google QuickBooks Demo and pull it up. Craig's Design and Landscape Service. It has a little workflow. If, you, if you're using QuickBooks Desktop, you might be used to the home screen workflow, which is nice. QuickBooks Online has this workflow, which is not nice. Uh, but we're going to look at three different parts of it, uh, the QuickBooks Online here. Excuse me. The first part on is the banking. To do a bank reconciliation, come down here to accounting and reconcile. And you would let me close that without 
it's going to ask you for the ending balance and the ending date. And so these are, again, statement. You want to go off the statement. If you try to reconcile again in the middle of the, the week or the middle of the month and try to use your online stuff, it's not going to work. Your reconciliations, you're going to have to end up undoing them. Uh, for our purposes, very simply, I'm going to say that it was 48.75 as of 31.23. And what we can see here, a very simple bank reconciliation it has three transactions that occurred during the month of January um, or that cleared during the month of January. Based off of my statement ending balance of 4875, I would go through and I basically check off these transactions and figure out what's left. And you can see by checking off this payment um, that went out, I paid $300 or Craig paid $300 and he received $175 and that gave him the cleared balance of $4,875. The expense that's not cleared here is $250. So he may have written a check and this is where reconciliations really come in into play for banks. If you write a check, sometimes checks don't clear. If you have employees, sometimes your employee doesn't cash that check right away you need to have it in your books in the month that it was written. Um, it's called constructive payment, constructive receipt. So you've paid this check out. It's no longer your money. It has been given to somebody else. It needs to be recorded in that, pay in that period. Then you do the reconciliation to find out, hey, look, Robertson and Associates did not cash this check. So you leave that on the books. The next month, when you come back in, you'll see that it's going to have that at the top of the list. Hopefully it's cleared in the second month. Otherwise, you need to call them and find out, hey, why hasn't this cleared? Um, if it's in three months, a lot of checks start to, they void themselves out after three months where you need to stop payment on it, figure out what's going on with it. Or, or if it's a paycheck, contact your employee. So it's all very simple. If you're using, the one benefit of QuickBooks Online is that we're trying to get less of this manual process. So here, if you only have three transactions, that was easy, right? Click, click, click. Let's click, click, and then you just hit finish now. It says zero difference, and you're good. If you have- It was like thousands, best case scenario. <laughs> yeah, best case scenario. Well, not really. This guy's not doing much business. Best case scenario is you've got tons of transactions, tons of money coming in, you know, and a few expenses, and your bank balance is going up, not down. That's best case scenario for me. Uh, not always the case, but having a lot of transactions, clicking through line by line by line on six pages of bank statements is tedious. So QuickBooks Online has the feature and this little gray, can you see this little gray box on your screen mm -hmm. right there? I see a bunch of pointers all over the place. I don't know why. Um, but if you're using QuickBooks Bank feeds, that you'll see a little green box appear. And when the green box appears, that means that it has shown up in the bank feeds. Bank feeds over here from the banking tab, just click banking. And you'll see all these transactions that if you link your account into QuickBooks Online, it'll show up here. Transactions are automatically downloaded. You just categorize the transactions or match the transactions from here. Then when you're on that reconciliation, it will have a little green box and QuickBooks automatically checks. Everything that has a green box, it's automatically checked. So you're done. So the bank reconciliations and the credit card reconciliations are very, very easy in QuickBooks if you have cleared this bank feed first. Now on the payment reconciliation, receiving payments, that gets a little bit trickier. And the reason is because you'll see here that it's finding matches. So we look down here and we see, this is money received. We see $694, one match found. A payment has been recorded in QuickBooks for $694, QuickBooks bank feed, matches it. Great. So you just click match. Credit card payments, on the other hand, if they come in in batch, if you receive a payment in WorkEase or anywhere that says let's $100 and it comes over and it's just that one payment, then yeah, it, if there's no credit card fees, it'll be able to match it. But if you have a whole bunch of payments, so you have 10 transactions at $100 a piece, WorkEase will push over each of those $100 transactions as payments because you want that to apply to your customer's account. It reduces the accounts receivable. You want each of those $100 payments, but
but what actually clears into your bank is a thousand dollars because it was 10 transactions total. Well, QuickBooks isn't sophisticated enough to say, Hey, look, it's 10 different transactions. So you would have to manually go through and find other matches and you would have to select each of the payments that added up into that total amount. Now, the problem that you have again is, and this is with any third party credit card, this is if you're collecting cash and checks, then yeah, that's the total amount. But when you're collecting um, credit cards, you have these credit card merchant service fees, which can range anywhere from you know 2% to 3% or up if you're using Amex or accepting Amex. So that's never going to match these numbers. So in order to do that, in order to get these nice little matches, so you get the green boxes so that you can get all that stuff uh, on the bank reconciliations done, you go in and you hit the plus new button and do a bank deposit. And what we'll see here is here's two payments that came in for Craig. The customers get credit for the full amount, $2,062.52. They get the full credit. But what actually hits our hits Craig's bank account is less than that because of the credit card services. So you would have to scroll down to the bottom of your list. You would have to find add funds to this deposit. You would have to find an account that is a merchant service fee account. Since this is a sample company, I can't adjust the account. Um, so I'm going to use here, I forgot what I said, commissions and fees or bank charges, something like that. You go in here to the amount section and you'd have to put a negative. So if you put in a negative uh, 16.52, now you can see the total deposit here. What should hit the bank, if this what hits the bank is $2,046 based off of $2,062.52 of payments. So this is the manual way of doing it. It's a lot more tedious than you would have to hit save and close there. Then you would go back over to the bank feed. You would find that deposit that was the 2000 and whatever I said, $54. And now you would be able to match the 2054 that shows up from your bank to your bank to the 2054 that you just recorded here as a bank deposit. So that's a three-step process to be able to get there. Sure. So how do you, how would you say, how is the, um, excuse me, how is the new workies feature, would you say better than how it's been done before or this, this three-step process? Um, yeah. When now, since workies has what they call the auto reconciliation feature is that instead of having to go through, hit new bank deposit, whenever the payment is processed, they go ahead and record that deposit for you. They go ahead and uh, deduct those credit card fees. I think they create a, an account and a vendor inside the, your chart of accounts for you. So it's automatically processed. So you never have to go through that. That takes, you know, uh, two of the three steps out of the equation for you. And that's the whole goal of going online of getting here is just having less clicks, less types, less things that you have to do, then it's all automatically matched. Sure. So you still have to do the rest of your transactions though, and then you can go do the bank reconciliation. So the reconciliation between the payments is, it just saves time, which is what we're trying to do because as fun as accounting is, it's almost as fun as, you know, reconciling with the wife, you know, that you don't want to do that all your time, right? You just want to get it done. You want to have the end result. You want to have that good relationship. You want to have those good financial statements. And, you know, that's where we're trying to go to. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, obviously having this, like automating this will, will save a ton of time. I think we said up to like 12 hours a week, we're seeing people are saving on their accounting, which I personally as not a finance or accounting person, I would be very thrilled to take that task off of my plate. I can imagine someone in accounting, you know, there's more you can do with that time, right? You're saving 12 hours a week. You can spend more time on things like aspects of the job that maybe you enjoy a little more rather than reconciling payments. Um, can you show or tell us a little more around the value of the new automatic reconciliation feature? Um, what do you think are probably the, the best, the best parts of it? 
Number one, you don't have to go pull off the uh, merchant service account from WorkEase anymore. So I think that's huge because that's just extra steps you have to do to match all these things. Um, you no longer have to sit there. When I would do this manually, go back here to this bank deposit. When I would do this manually for customers of mine, I look at whatever number I have to guess. I basically have to guess because I don't have always the merchant service account available, but I have to guess at what this is, what the number should be, which bank deposit it was. And then I have to, you know, as you can see, I have a calculator built into my little task bar here because yeah, I do this a lot. And then you have to guess, you have to take the 1652 and you have to divide it by the total amount. You say, okay, well, look, that's 0.8%. So maybe that's not the right transaction because I know I'm paying 2.7% in credit card fees and that's only 0.8%. So maybe that's not what made up that 2046. Then you got to go back to the bank account. You got to pull up that deposit slip. You got to figure out where that deposit actually came from, which customers it came from, make sure it's all applied correctly. If you're using this pay system, if you're using this auto reconciliation feature, all that stuff is done for you. The only things that you're having to record on here that you're, you're making these deposits is if you have cash deposits, if you have check deposits. Um, if you're actually depositing the checks individually into the bank, then it's going to automatically match just like this matches to a payment. But if you collect cash, if your guys are out doing their jobs all day and they come back to the office and they give you their money bag or whatever, here's the cash that I've collected from the, the customers for this truckload. Um, great. You've got all this cash. You take it to the bank. Now you're making a, you know, $5,000 deposit in the bank or, you know, $2,000 deposit in the bank. It's again, even if you record each individual payment and in work ease, it's not going to match it. So every time that you have, every time that you have these extra steps, you have to be able to track where the money came from, how it got there. We run into this problem a lot with uh, restaurants, the use of point of sale system, trying to get it back into their accounting system. Um, because it's cash. Who got a tip? Tips are going to be an issue for you as well. Um, there's just a lot of pieces into it. And I got to tell you that I see it all the time, all the time that that's where it's messed up. So taking that completely out of the equation is absolutely crucial. I, if I actually had a junk calling business, which as many webinars as I've watched from you guys doing the junk calling, I'm like, man, or Maybe I'm in the wrong line of work, you know, because <laughs> it's very I, hot right now. <laughs> yeah, and I see signs popping up all over the place here. Um, but I think I would almost require the work ease pay, you know, because it's just I don't have time if I'm running this business. Now, for me, from an accounting perspective, I don't care. That's what I do all day. I sit here and crunch numbers and I've got reports. I've got five computer screens here so I can open up reports all over the place and see what needs to happen. But. If I'm running a junk calling business or I'm running, you know, any kind of field service management business, I don't want to sit there and, and crunch those numbers. If it's automatic credit card, I'm paying that two and a half percent, three percent. I don't even know what work he's charges, but it's I think it's under three uh, percent. They, they just had that other one, uh, another feature they were adding to. Uh, but anyway, the point is that I don't want to mess with that. I'm trying to run my business. I'm trying to grow my business. Uh, so taking all that out of the equation, that's just what I would do. I don't want people bringing cash back to me. I don't want, you know, bags of cash sitting around my office for somebody to get upset with me about. Um, we're taking it to the bank. Boom. It's in there. It's done. QuickBooks Online matches all these transactions. Um, you can record the receipts in there, reconcile all this stuff. Once this is your source of truth. Anytime that I do a QuickBooks cleanup, the first thing that I do is I make sure that every account is reconciled. Every credit card and every bank account is reconciled to the penny. There's no such thing as a reconciliation discrepancy account. I don't know whoever came up with that. That's not a real thing. It needs to reconcile to the penny. Otherwise, you've done something wrong in your workflow. So we go in there, boom. Once you have those numbers in, and I've, I tell my clients that too, if all your transactions are recorded in there, it doesn't matter. We can manipulate it. We can move stuff around left and right. We can change accounts. Oh, I'd like to see our chart of accounts like this. You want to run KPI reports? You want to see how your business is doing? Great. Fantastic. The very first step is to make sure that everything is off your bank feeds. Make sure that everything in your bank deposits. The numbers that would show up here, this is what shows up into your uh, undeposited funds on your balance sheet because it says it never made it to the bank account until you go in and you make that deposit 
where you match those payments in QuickBooks that have cleared the bank to these, then there's nothing else you can do. Um, I, in fact, I had a, a customer the other day, one of my clients tell me, why aren't you, why are these reports look funny? I'm like, well, did you record all the transactions? He said, no. So, well then let's start with that. And then we'll, we'll figure out the rest of it. And I mean, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. I would do it. Everything automatic, it, automated as much as possible. Um, just to get it in there. Yep. It seems twofold, really. You're not only saving yourself a lot of time on the manual task, but also to some degree, you're to your point, you're reducing that risk of human error, right? It It's right. automatically handling it. Um, you don't, you can worry less about whether or not it's getting done correctly and focus more on growing your business, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, you nailed it right there. You said it in a lot less words than I did, but you know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's absolutely crucial. You've got too much, too much room for error. Just like I said, I, I guess what the number was. And when I put the calculator to it, it came up to 0.8%, which there's no credit card merchant accounts doing 0.8% anything. Otherwise we'd all be on that one, but yeah, so it, it makes sense. It doesn't make sense to have it in, in multiple parts. It makes sense to have everything consolidated to use all the, all this technology, all these automated features. They're there to help. They're there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we do them. Um, all right, great. So I think you told us a lot about um, the feature, how it works, the benefits of it. I think let's take a minute to open up the chat for some questions. I see some typing going on, some people throwing stuff in. Um, let's start with Kaylee. She says she doesn't get why the fee doesn't show up separately from the payment. Um, their accountant has to do a large gross sum of the fees and then it kind of cuts off. I don't know if there was more to it, Kaylee. Um, what do you think? Is there a reason why the fee sh doesn't show up separately? Different merchant service accounts do, do it differently. Some of them have net fees. Some of them have gross fees where they're separate. Some of them have just here's what the deposit is. Um, and it just depends on the merchant service account you're using. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe that Workies Pay is powered by Stripe, maybe, which does mm -hmm. the net deposit. And so there's nothing that Workies can do to make that better for you, except for create a tool, and we'll call it the auto reconciliation tool for payments, where now you don't have to worry about it. Your accountant should not be making big adjustments for this, because if you have this enabled, if I don't know if it's default enabled. It, do you know if it's enabled by default now, or if it's uh, something? You have to I'm not fix? sure. I'd have to. I'd have to check and see. Okay. I'm not so sure the. We're and I think you've got some uh, things to send out right on how the how it works and working. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, we have some resources that we'll be sharing. Um, we'll with. We'll, um, we'll be sharing some resources around how it works. I can put a help article in the chat here if that's helpful, but it'll also come in the follow up email. Whichever way that it, it, either you have to enable it or it's automatically enabled, it's something yep. you absolutely need. Your accountant should not be making adjustments because your accountant's not going to sit there. He's probably got a calculator on his screen, just like I have on my screen, and sit there and guess as to what the net payment or, or credit card fee adjustment should be. Um, turn this on. Make sure that it's working correctly. Track those payments in. Oh, I do want to give one, one word of warning in this, Okay because I ran into this myself. I am used to QuickBooks Online wants you to do everything live, like instantly, right? And that's why they have the bank feed. This was says here, updated moments ago. They try to get you to always do it. On my accountant screen, it tells me how many transactions haven't been recorded from the bank feed. They just want you to keep pushing it. When you accept credit card payments, there is a delay to actually receive the payment. It's not you swipe the credit card, you look at your bank account and there it is, right? It has to go through the merchant service. It usually takes like two days to go. But Workies automatically pushes payments. If you have that button checked to automatically push payments into your QuickBooks account, then it's going to show up here in undeposited funds for the full amount that you recorded. So if you swipe the card for $100 and then you go in here to bank deposits, it's going to say receive from, you know, Joe Blow and John Smith, $100, $100. You can't go in there and say, oh, look, I'm going to go ahead and make that deposit because it's going to clear the bank tonight. You have to wait. You have to wait until it actually hits a bank account. And then 
Stripe, I think, sends it to WorkEase that sends it to QuickBooks and says, boom, here's the amount of fees that were taken out. Here's the 3% fees that were taken out. So 97 and 97, and it's automatically processed. So when I have customers, WorkEase customers or my clients going through here, I say, look, don't click anything that says credit card. When it says a payment method here, um, when it has one of these payment methods that's coming over from WorkEase, it's a credit card or something, don't click those. Let WorkEase do its thing. Let it sit there. Now, if it's sitting there for five days, you need to go back to your bank account and say, hey, did this actually clear somewhere and find out why it wasn't auto reconciled? Um, so that's just my word of warning. You do have to wait two days before two or three days when it, for it to clear. So leave those credit card payments alone. You can go ahead and make deposits of the cash. You take your cash bag to the bank at night or you take your stack of checks at the end of the week. You can go ahead and make those deposits, record them in QuickBooks when you make them with the bank but not on the credit cards using the reconciliation. All right. Um, so let me, sorry, just coming through some more questions that came through. Um, Richard asks, which I think maybe you might've just helped with is how do you know it's working? He says his has been connected for months, enabled for months, um, and it hasn't been working. Do you think that's something that maybe could be solved by just waiting those two to three days? Or do you think there might be more to that? And Richard, we can connect offline um, to troubleshoot as well if we don't answer your question right now. Yeah. If it's not working, you got to contact the customer service at WorkEase to make sure that it, everything is, is being synced. My guess off the top of my head is somewhere in the QuickBooks sync, the payment button is not checked or something. So it's not making that connection, uh, but the WorkEase customer service will be able to help that. I, I don't work for WorkEase, um, <laughs> but it's- Yeah, Richard, I'll connect with you. Um, we, can, we can get you in touch with your customer support representative. Um, and I'll also, as mentioned, I'm just doing two things at once. So I will provide a resource to help troubleshoot as well from our help, um, our help articles that might also help you kind of self-serve a little bit there. But I'll connect with you, Richard, and, and we'll get you in touch to make sure that, that you have everything you need. Um, Jennifer, um, does the... Jennifer asks, does the WorkEase auto reconciliation tool do the undeposited funds and how does it handle tips included on a check? Okay, so when it comes over from WorkEase, okay, when you receive a payment from WorkEase, it's going to, including the tips, all that stuff will come over. When the invoice is synced from WorkEase, and there's another one, if you guys aren't syncing your invoices, if you aren't making sure that it's synced, you're gonna, your accounts receivable is going to be off. Invoices sync from WorkEase to QuickBooks, right? Not jobs. So WorkEase has the ability to go in and, you know, uh, put it, items on a job and then receive payment on that job. If you have the QuickBooks sync turned on so that the payments are being synced over, but you haven't created that invoice, the invoice is not going to sync over. So you're just going to end up with a negative accounts receivable. Somebody's made a payment and there's no invoice. So you got to do the invoice. Then when the invoice syncs over, it'll actually map out the tips as a separate line. I think either as a separate line or in the tips category, we were going back and forth on that API integration. Um, so the invoice is in there. The payment is still the same. So if you got $100 plus you got a $10 tip, so $110 uh, payment, that's what's going to hit the bank account. You're going to see the $110 minus the credit, uh, credit card processing fees. So that's what we care about. That's our source of truth. Those are the bank statements. That's what's coming in there. The invoice is going to come over separately. Then you pay that out in your payroll or you cash out to your employees, but it has nothing to do with, with the auto reconciliation feature and what's actually hitting your bank. That full amount, including the tip, if you collect your tip through WorkEase Pay, that full amount will be auto reconciled here. It will go when you receive the payment, when you record the payment. And I think uh, somebody asked that, show the whole process and this is a little bit short of a webinar, so I don't have time to go through the whole process to show it exactly, but you receive the payment in WorkEase. That payment comes over to undeposited funds. You wait two days or however long it takes for it to clear the bank account. If there's holidays, weekends, sometimes it can be three, four days. Once that clears, WorkEase sends another little signal over here to change your undeposited funds and record the, that as a real deposit. It gets matched to your bank feeds. At the end of the month, you do your uh, bank reconciliations. 
So it does work on the full amount. All right. Um, and then we have another great question. Um, so thank you, for, Jennifer. Thank you for answering that. And Jennifer, thank you for the great question. Um, so moving on to the next one. Look, if, sorry if we've already answered this, but I've come that we haven't already answered this, I don't think. Um, when looking under the sales tab and clicking all transactions or invoices, it shows some invoices paid by credit debit still have partial amount due, even though um, as small as 50 cents. Is this because QuickBooks is taxing products we've already taxed on workies or is that because of credit card charges? The workies tax works the same way as the QuickBooks tax. I mean, you have a tax rate, it applies the tax. If it's done correctly, it should apply the tax. My first guess, if I were to look at this, would be, let's look at the credit cards. Um, this auto reconciliation feature, I think they've been beta testing it for some time, but what was happening is a lot like that, is that a payment, the QuickBooks user would record the payment as what hits the bank account, say, hey, I received this amount of money versus what Workies said, hey, we received this full payment. But if you don't have that synced correctly, you should never be entering your payment information into QuickBooks. It should come over from Workies. And that's, that is how your workflow stays true. If you enter it into to QuickBooks and then you're double checking it, that's extra steps in your process. And we're here to, to minimize those extra steps, to minimize the number of times that you have to click and look at reports. Workies has reports. Workies has sales reports and different things. And you can actually go through and look at all that stuff. But we want to be recording everything in WorkEase and have it push over to QuickBooks, not the other way around. So if the payment was recorded in QuickBooks, apply it against a customer, but that payment only came in at, as you say, 50 cents less, my first guess would be credit cards. If it's not credit card uh, service fees, if that's not what happened, if you did record it in there and it, it changed the number on the invoice, go back into WorkEase and go back into that invoice in QuickBooks, go back to the invoice in WorkEase and look at them and see why is that number different than this number over here. And if it is the same number um, or if it's off by 50 cents because the tax rates are different, there's your problem. So you need to adjust the tax rates on one side or the other to make sure that, that they do match. All right, thank you. I think, I think that was helpful. Um, and then I think that's, that's all we have for questions right now. Does anyone else, I'm gonna put this help article um, for automatically reconciling your payments and payouts in QuickBooks. So you guys have that there in the chat. Um, are there any other questions while we have Alan here as an expert in resource on this? There you go. Why'd you have me here? You just had it all written out here. <laughs> we have it all written it's out right page. there. Here's our it webinar. Helps to have the conversation. Screen, here's the webinar. <laughs> um, um, all right. We have one more, it looks like. And again, we'll leave it open for a few more minutes if anyone else has any anything else to ask. Um, Jean wonders, I understand that if we miss a step on workies, how do we make the correction? As an example, we miss the GST. Do we just go change it or can we change it if payment is made? Let's just see, do we just go change it or can we change it when the, if the payment is made? Okay, so uh, yeah, you want to make sure that your work ease is up to speed uh, wherever it is. So if you've forgotten to collect the sales tax um, in work ease, then if you still have to pay that tax, yeah, I'd, I don't change the invoices to a customer that goes out because that's that's what the customer received. That's how much they paid. You come back, you say that's what it is. So if you didn't pay that, yeah, you're gonna have to pay it on the on the back end. So don't change don't change that in workies. That's just an additional expense to you because you have to cover the cost for not not collecting it on the invoice. Is there a better way to change that to make that correction, or is it? If you miss the GST, it's probably because there was a workflow. You just need to revamp your workflow and figure out why that is. Sometimes um, in the items section, maybe that item is, is marked as non-taxable or, or subject to a different tax, um, GST being one of the Canadian taxes there. Um, so it does, 
if you if you're in the different territory and so it's collecting a different amount of tax and you forget to manually go in yeah so okay yeah so that's all you have to do um but don't don't adjust the invoice don't adjust the payments that collect in workies um make that adjustment on your own books because you're responsible for it not the customer at that point and you don't want to change otherwise you end up possibly back with whatever um was being said earlier where, Hey, I've got this 50 cent discrepancy and that's because, Oh, I forgot to collect tax. So I went back and I increased the invoice by 50 cents and then that pushed over. And now it says that the customer owes me 50 cents, which is great if that's what you want to do. But I guarantee you, you come out and you clean out my garage or you fix my air conditioning. And then you send me a 50 cent invoice because you forgot to collect tax. You know, eh, we'll see if, you ever, <laughs> if I ever checks in the mail, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I do want to point out here that, um, as it was said in the chat, yes, it is uh, has to be enabled from the marketplace. Yep. It does say that here in this uh, link that you shared. So, yeah. Right. Looks like we have um, maybe another question coming in, so we'll give it another minute. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think I think we answered everyone else's questions. So let's just give it another minute. Any other questions, feel free to please ask. Um, I did share that resource with steps on how to enable it. Um, it's pretty much just introductory how to get going with it. Um, so you should all have that. Yep. And so as it's the chart of accounts, work use pay, it's yeah. I mean, this is automatic, guys. This is something, this is what you need to just save the time. So it looks save like- Save the time and reduce the risk of errors, right? Absolutely, that's, absolutely. That's the name of the game. <laughs> totally. Um, All right. Um, great. I think that's it for questions. Um, I don't see anyone typing. So I think we can, oh, let's see. We got one more. Does this work with both QuickBooks Online and Desktop? No. And I'll, I'm going to tell you this right now because I get this kind of question quite a bit too from the Workies customers is, yeah, Workies integrates with QuickBooks Desktop, but QuickBooks Desktop uses a system called a Web Connect to be able to connect to third-party stuff. And it's, it's terrible. It's been terrible ever since it came out, but it came out 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, it was better than anything else we had, right? And so um, when I was taking the advanced... Uh, Pro Advisor certification for desktop 15 years ago, we had a whole section in there on troubleshooting that web connect thing, but it's a pain and nobody could really use it. The developers couldn't really use it. So QuickBooks went online. Um, and I guess it was probably around 2013 or 2014 and it was you know, online was okay. And then a few years after that, QuickBooks finally realized that they weren't going to be able to do it the same way they did desktop where they could just hold every aspect of it and make people buy enterprise or something. So they opened up the uh, API and uh, developer packages to all these companies. And that's why we have all these integrations into QuickBooks because they made it easy, easier for the APIs to work with QuickBooks online. So companies started popping up all over the place. If you're using desktop, even if Workies went through the trouble of making this kind of adjustment in there, if they could, there's still like a, about a 40, 50% chance that it's not going to come over correctly because of QuickBooks. So yeah, yes. Online, as much as I, I grew up learning desktop, you know, um, I love desktop. It's very inclusive until you try to integrate other systems into it. And then it just goes bonkers. I don't use the live feeds in desktop. I don't use any of that stuff in desktop because the, the web connect thing doesn't work. So yes, if you want to be a company of the future, if you want to be a company of the now, if you want to take advantage of all these tools that are available to you and not just in WorkEase, but there's other apps that you can build onto your QuickBooks. Your QuickBooks is, you know, the core and WorkEase has the workflow into it. You can get, you know, KPI reporting, you can get all kinds of stuff built into your QuickBooks online. That's where you do it. You have your mobile access to it. Everything is online on the cloud. You're not having to worry about uh, you know, data data file fragments floating around, database miscues, and web connect. So yeah, 
online would be my recommendation. Makes sense. Um, everything's digital in the cloud, you know, everything's digital and online these days. So um, let me see. Before I send, um, Jared asks, before I send statements, I like to compare QuickBooks to WI. QuickBooks shows a list of all accounts with totals under outstanding. Can you tell me how to find a similar report in WI so I don't have to compare one account at a time? Yeah. Um, I have not been able to find that. And it's something that I'm actually talking to WorkEase about, uh, having some kind of accounts receivable tracking in WorkEase. But WorkEase isn't made to do your accounts receivable tracking. QuickBooks is made to do your accounts receivable tracking. So it's redundant step but I totally see where you're coming from because I do a, a lot of these work ease type cleanups and it would save me a tremendous amount of time just to be able to look at the totals from everybody like that. But if you're using, and as Ashley said, it reduces the error. If you're using this process, if you're receiving the work ease pay and it's automatically processing over in QuickBooks, then you're not having to go back and, and send those statements and track that stuff because these things tie, they should tie. Um, but yeah, I totally see where you're coming from, Jared, and I'm with you. Um, hopefully we can get a report generated like that. Um, I, again, I know you've all in the chat. I just saw she was talking with somebody. Um, something that I'd like to see happen, but not right now. There is no way I can show you to do that in a clear yeah, way. Yeah, we are, we are actually a minute over time, so we, <laughs> I don't oh. think we have time for all that. So today. The rest of the marriage, my marriage advice is <laughs> out the window, huh? Till next time. Yeah, we'll put, so next time, keep an eye out for the marriage counseling um, session with Alan coming soon. Um, but I just, before we head out, I just want to thank you all so much for coming. Um, and before we go, a quick reminder to the group, as webinar participants, if you do not already have workies, you are eligible for an exclusive pricing deal. Um, our team would be happy to share the details. We have a couple of options for you. So if you are interested in learning more about workies and how it can work for your business, please reach out. Um, we will get working on not advancing this auto reconciliation um, feature. And if anyone um, has any questions, please feel free to reach out on the side. I'll stay on the chat a little bit. I know Alan is pulling up his contact info. Um, I do want to thank everyone who joined and participated. You'll get a follow-up email with a link to the recording of this session, and I'll be sure to include that resource on how to enable and get set up with auto reconciliation as well. And um, Alan, did you, did you, anything you want to add before we see our friends off here? Just say, I'm sorry. You know, it was probably your fault anyway. If you're trying to reconcile, just say, I'm sorry, dear. And, you know, move on with life. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So great closing, closing thoughts and tips. Um, thank you all again. We hope to see you all in our next webinar in May. Keep an eye out for registration and details. I think it's slated for May 10th. Um, and I will put down a phone number, some contact information, and you guys will get the follow-up. So feel free to reach out. Anything you need will be available. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. Exactly. We're now in the therapy session. So <laughs> thanks, Glenn. <laughs> thanks, everyone. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all.